Devontae Wyatt, Jordan Davis, Nicobe Dean, Trayvon Walker, George Pickens. Woo. Ravens would have a plethora of Georgia talent to select from in the first round of the draft. But who would be the best option? Who would be the best fit for the Baltimore Ravens to pick when it comes to number 14? We brought on Georgia expert and a very, very special guest. For this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers to help us break it all down. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Team Keep It Clean, a very special guest in the building today. We got my guy Jake Beats, uh, Georgia Bulldog. Um, and he is joining us for an episode, a special episode of NFL questions from subscribers. So Jake, I uh, appreciate you coming on. And first, before we get into it, how did you just develop this love uh, for the Georgia Bulldogs? Yeah, so my family moved around a ton uh, as a kid. I've, I've been a Ravens fan longer than a Bulldog fan. So if you see me on Twitter and I'm talking about the Bulldogs, just for the Ravens fans out there know that my heart still is a little bit stronger for the Ravens. So <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Uh, we lived in Maryland and we're, we're neighbors with Marvin Lewis a long time ago, back when he was the DC. Oh. Um, so that's how I kind of got, got into the Ravens as just a little kid, basically the team at the start. Um, and then we moved to Georgia. So I didn't have any collegiate uh, fandom anywhere. Maryland, I mean, the Terps are a thing, but other than that, there's there's not really anything to get into there. But uh, I've lived in Georgia longer than any other state. Uh, my little sister attended UGA. Actually, I did not, um, but I've just been a Georgia fan as long as we've been in the South for the most part. Okay, cool. I, I, I didn't know that, man. So I appreciate you letting me and letting everybody else know. Uh, your background story of why you love those Georgia Bulldogs and of course the Ravens too, but they love those Georgia Bulldogs because yeah, on Twitter we see you talking about them all the time. Um, yep. if ever I uh I remember when when we first watched film on Jordan Davis, I'm like, oh yeah, I know like I'm I'm seeing all this stuff from him, but I know Jake he he's been on that for a long time. Yeah. Um, so I, I figured that you would know now. Uh, with your Twitter, what is your Twitter so everybody can know and they can follow you there? Yeah, it's at real Jake Vogel. So it's just, you know, at real and then my name, Jake Vogel, V O G E L, in case you needed to know that. All right, cool. And you got a podcast too with one of your buddies that you run. I believe these the Cowboys fan. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm, I've been a part of a couple different things. Um, Josh Wingate is a Cowboys yeah, fan. We, we don't really do a regular podcast together, but I have jumped on his before. Um, and then I also do stuff with with Matt and Chris. Just joking, you had him on your show, oh, um, yeah. Chris Aguilera, <laughs> and uh, Victor and Coach KD Arrington. Um, super cool guys. We do a show called the Sports uh, Sports Freak Podcast, mm -hmm. um, Sports Freak University. So th that's really cool. We're just going through um, every by position uh, to get Ravens fans ready for draft time. All right, cool. So I appreciate you coming on and let's get into these questions. So the first one, it comes from me um, to you. And I know with the Ravens, um, big issues on defense uh, last year, we could chalk it up to injuries and whatnot. And that's cool. But for the longest, the Ravens just have not had a consistent pass rush now me personally i think it's been scheme more than anything but I, I think something that has been almost just as big as a scheme has been the lack of a disruptive player up front on the interior of that defensive line i watched jordan davis he was literally the first and so far the only person uh coming out of the draft that i've watched film on so far and from him in my opinion, he was a good mix. He wasn't quite Lodi Nada, but he was not quite Brandon Williams. He was sort of in the middle of both, in my opinion, um, to where this dude just had this strength. And he's obviously a giant. He clogs up the middle. Um, and he just, it was, it was crazy to watch him. 
Um, but what? how could he add to this Ravens defense? What could he bring if the Ravens were to draft him? What he what would he do for Baltimore? Man. Yeah, Jordan Davis is a special, <laughs> special uh player. Uh definitely a top two guy in all of Athens. Uh just fans Ooh. loved him, loved his personality, and obviously loved what he could do on the field. Uh so just like what you're mentioning, the Ravens have been lacking in terms of interior pass rush and pocket pushing. And I think Jordan Davis can give you that in spades. Uh, he definitely does move the pocket. If you just look at box scores, you're not going to be impressed with what he did at UGA, but uh, they had so much talent. Um, an another guy, you know, next year, Jalen Carter, I think is the best out of the group. Number 88 on that Georgia defense. He will probably be a top 10 pick a oh. defensive lineman. So there's a reason that Davis came off the field even though he's talented, they want to keep all of those guys fresh. Um, so Carter came in, you know, on second and third down uh, pretty often. Uh, okay. but yeah, Davis, amazing tester at the combine. Uh, according to a lot of those guys that that focus on that, he is quite literally the second best performer at the combine at any position in NFL history. Um, that kind of tells you the athlete that this guy is Megatron's number one for those that are wondering. And Jordan Davis comes in at number two. Uh, so if you're wondering, is this guy going to play on third down? Is this mm -hmm. guy going to get sacks? What is he going to do for my defense? I would say, look what he did at UGA. And at the same time as that, uh, kind of, be more creative with what you think NFL coaches would want this guy to do. Uh, he was a nose tackle at Georgia, but just because you don't see a guy do something doesn't mean that he can't do it. And with those kind of measurements and athleticism, I think there's, there's very little that this guy can't do. Uh, so I would be extremely excited for the Ravens to take him. He may not be the top two or three pick for me at 14, but he's, He's up there after that. Speaking of those Georgia Bull Bulldogs who you're very familiar with, who would probably be the best pass rusher um, on that squad? Because Ravens, of course, they drafted Adafi away last year, um, but they have a lot of issues at pass rush once again. Um, a lot of holes, a lot of vacancies. Uh, of course, in the interior of the defensive line, Brandon Williams, free agent, Calais Campbell, free agent. Uh, but then when you look at pass rushes, those edge guys, uh, Pernell McPhee, free agent, mm -hmm. uh, Justin Houston, uh, free agent, Tyus Bowser, he got hurt on the very last game of the year. So his status for next season could be up in the air, at least for early on next season. Uh, so who would you say is the best or are the best pass rushers on that Georgia defense who Ravens fans should look out for? Uh, well, the guys entering the draft, you don't have to go far. Trayvon Walker is maybe a little unpolished. Uh, hmm. I think I think part of that is is literally what Kirby Smart and the defensive coordinator asked the the defenders to do. So Walker moved around the front. Reminds me very much of like a Zadarius Smith, a hmm. Pernell McPhee. Uh, obviously, somebody that I would love to see in Baltimore. The problem is. He's more freaky athletic than either of those guys. Um, yeah. He's probably going to be a top 10 pick, maybe ah. maybe higher than 10. So I think he would be wonderful for the Ravens. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe Owe would still end up being the better pass rusher, but just what what Trayvon Walker can offer you, um, you know, from day one in the run game, similar to Owe, but also just like a little bit bigger. His size, he's in the 270s. Um, and he, you watch him on film, he's chasing guys down backside, like 40 yards down the field. And that's not what you see from somebody, his size and in his length. So uh, I think he's probably the, at the top of the list. And then after that, I would say Devonte Wyatt and Jordan Davis are next. Okay. Now, if you had to choose, if you had to pick one of the three, or even if, uh, if, if it was a situation where all three of them, they started falling. And I know 14 is not really that far down in the draft, but if they were all available sitting there at 14 and you had to run up to the podium, which name would you call and why? Yeah, for me, it'd be Trayvon Walker. Uh, hmm. Edge is a premium position. And 
So is interior defensive line. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just think after those those top offensive tackles go off the board, I, I'm looking at edge and corner for the Ravens primarily. And then if, if some of those guys fall off, then at that point, I look towards Jordan Davis and Devontae Wyatt. And you could really flip a coin. I would be happy with either. I think why it gives you a little bit more day one pass rush. Um, I think his change of direction skills are, are very nice for his size. And you saw him do it at Georgia a little bit more than Jordan Davis in terms of actually getting to the quarterback and just kind of some of the moves he has. Uh, but Davis is a different animal at six foot six plus and 340 pounds. Uh, 341 is what he measured in at the combine. But um I think he has some untapped potential that NFL teams are are going to be excited to get. So I'd be happy with any of them. But my answer to your question is Trayvon Walker. The Ravens last year um, and really for the past couple of years, they've been having some issues when it's come to linebacker. Um, they, of course, dra- drafted Patrick Queen a couple of years ago, and he's shown some promise, here, but he's been. Uh, a bit up and down. They also drafted Malik Harrison too, uh, but they've been calling on reinforcements like Josh Bynes, uh, LJ Fort, um, and last year was no different. Uh, they did the same thing again, but there was seemed to be issues uh, at inside linebacker. And with Patrick Queen, uh, it doesn't seem like he has built all the confidence in the world for the Ravens to consider him the answer. Uh, moving forward at inside linebacker, I still feel like there are a lot of question marks there. Not that he's a bad player, of course, but just that there's some some more question marks there. Um, so if if by somehow, some way, there was some chance that the Ravens could either take somebody like Kobe Dean, or if they could bring in a veteran at inside linebacker, which one of those would you prefer? What, what do you think would be better for the Ravens? Yeah, it's it's a tough decision. Um, mm, that's for, a good thing for for me. N'Kobe Dean is a top ten, top twelve talent in this mm-hmm. draft. That being said, he's not he's not my first choice for the Ravens. I already gave you three guys I would take ahead of Dean, um, and, and it's really tough for me because I think N'Kobe Dean is a, he's special. Like his coverage ability is instant. NFL level he's going to cover it's not like you're getting Patrick Queen a guy that didn't even have a full season starting at at LSU you're getting a guy that's been the the heartbeat the leader a starter on that Georgia Bulldogs defense and a big reason why Jordan Davis and Devontae Wyatt and some of those other guys came back for a senior year um I think his leadership intangibles are through the roof and uh, his knowledge of the game uh, I think he's a film junkie. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm praising him. I love that idea, but you're going to have to pay a first round pick to, to get him, in my opinion. Mm. And, and then the vet route, I think, is is very doable for a year. It, it depends on how old the vet is. Um, maybe a couple years and you just kind of ride with Queen as your will linebacker, but maybe more of your your star flashy player and your, your Mike linebacker that comes in can just, you know, uh, bring peace to that unit uh so i i think either way i know bobby wagner is is a hot name um hicks from from arizona is another Mm -hmm. one and i'm sure we'll see some more in the coming days just get cut or uh just some free agents on the market our next question came from my guy chris kill seven he said i wanted to ask you about the likelihood of the ravens continuing with eric DaCosta. i saw a comment a bit ago stating that since eric DaCosta took over for the ravens at gm the drafts haven't gone too well. So naturally, I went back and I checked the draft history of who he drafted. Sadly, we received a poor grade on all the draft classes he has picked so far, receiving an F in 2019, a C plus in 2020, and a D in a D minus in 2021. Uh, ironically enough, it also seems as though the Ravens are content on sending away all the pieces that haven't worked out from those draft classes this offseason. Um as us Ravens fans know, the organization likes to build through the draft and not free agency. So I wanted to ask, with all these teams building super teams, especially in the AFC, with free agents, are the Ravens going to be able to survive the siege of having poor draft classes 
and then turning around and not spending money in free agency? Or are we going to suffer and it cause enough to push the emergency button? Hmm. So how do you feel about that? Eric DaCosta with his past couple of draft classes um, and the Ravens not really being big spenders like that in free agency. Do you think they'll be able to keep up with the rest of not only the AFC, but the NFL? Uh, I think they will. In, in my opinion, these next two years are critical. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think it's a hot seat type situation for DaCosta mm-hmm. at all. Uh, in fact, I liked his 2020 and 2021 drafts much better than those grades would indicate. Um, For me, it's really hard to give a grade to a draft class without giving them like three full years, Mm -hmm. maybe even four full years since they have happened um, to see how those players are, are doing in the league and uh, performing for your team. So it, it's kind of, kind of pointless to, to grade things that, that early in my opinion, but uh, the, the cap, is going to rise significantly next year. Um, It's already risen a little bit this year. And I think that's going to help Baltimore be more aggressive in the free agent market. And we already know DaCosta is not a guy that is um, shy from making big moves. He did trade for Marcus Peters. He did trade for Yannick Ngakwe. Uh, I, I feel like we forget about that a little bit since this past year was doom and gloom with all the injuries and, with those guys getting hurt and being put on IR, we didn't have the cap space to go out and actually make a push. Mm. Now, do you think, um, cause he brought up a Marcus Peters, uh, cause that was a, what a fifth round pick in Kenny young, um, mm-hmm. brought up Yannick and Godquay. I want to say that was Calais Campbell is another one. Oh, Calais Campbell. Calais Campbell was a trade. Yeah. That was a, that was a fifth round pick. Um, I don't remember what the compensation was for Unique and Gagway. I want to say it was like a third and a fifth or a third and a sixth. I forgot what it was. But do you think that this could be a year where Eric DaCosta, he maybe ups the aggression just a little bit? Um, I wouldn't expect him to trade a 2022 first round pick. Um, but do you think it's possible that he could be a little more aggressive? And and because maybe teams, teams may be catching on because teams may be like, ah, this guy, Eric DaCosta. Fifth round pick here, fifth round pick there. Oh, he's not getting over on us anymore with those fifth round picks. We're done with that. Do you think this could be the year where he has to step it up a bit uh, when it comes to being aggressive and offering more? Uh, I think it's it's very specific to the situation. Um, maybe teams around the league are noticing, you know, in some ways how he's fleecing people. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, the Kare Vedvik one is is in my mind right now. We we bring in a, a camp body punter kicker and, and we get a fifth round pick for him. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> m- maybe something like that. I don't really look at it as DaCosta is cheap. I look at mm. it as he's trying to make the most of every move he makes. And I like that about him. So I, I do agree with you that he he may be more aggressive this year uh and going forward just to kind of push push the chips on, into the table uh into the center of the table and uh kind of go all in like i done made it i done made it what as my homie ain't that right and grave it right and grave it shout out to engraving